Welcome back to another episode of Debatable with your hosts, Selena and Kyle. I'm Nina. I'm Kyle. For yeah. this episode, we wanted to tackle the idea of exposure um, as compensation, especially when it comes to building artists in the field of music and art and design. So this is usually a phenomenon where people message artists or performers wanting commissions of various kinds. Like they want their own track music or they want their own piece of art. But they're only really willing to pay through liking tweets or sharing the artwork or giving the artist a shout out, etc. So these these are what we call exposure payments. Yeah, so there's a lot of debate surrounding this because some artists say that we should be willing to accept exposure as payment since it trickles to benefits in the future. While others say that artists should, you know, stand their ground and be paid for whatever it is that they make or they create. So given that there's a lot to be said about this topic, we reached out to some artists from the Ateneo Senior High School's Music Industry Organization, or also known as MIO, um, and we asked them to join this podcast to tell us about their experiences with exposure and exposure payment and their thoughts on the topic. Hi, I'm Q Lagan. Uh, I'm the bassist of Doubtful Figure, and I've done so many gigs in the past, but uh, I have never been paid for any of them. Pleasant afternoon, I am Nina Valeriana, vocalist and rhythm guitarist of the band OD, and occasionally a music producer for a project called The After Party. Uh, I have done around 4 or 5 gigs and have only been paid with food. Uh, hi, I'm Nino Tomas. I am the uh, rhythm guitarist and currently the vocalist of Dalfo Figure, Kabanda ko si Q. Um, so let's give a rough estimate of like, let's say 15 or 20 gigs we've been as a band. Uh, never been paid for a single one though. Hooray! Yeah, so I'm going to address this. Um, Nino Tomas is in fact related to me. He's my brother. Fun fact is he also used to be a debater, but not really, but not anymore, sort of. And now we live totally different lives, so I thought it would be best to ask him about the life of an artist and what they end up going through. So, as you listeners probably know, we're not artists. So, admittedly, our own experiences are different, and our idea of performing is also very different. Our exposure to compensation is, you know, different as well. So, our idea of horrible interactions, you know, I think that you're seeing a trend here, it's also different. So before we go into the specifics, we want to get a bit of an idea of what artists end up having to go through. Do you have any like commission horror stories that you'd like to share? For example, like when people demanded um, free work from you or you weren't treated properly or you were ghosted mid-negotiation. Like you show up at a birthday party and they got another gig person to play. Pala. Uh, personally, uh, I think, yeah, we... We did have uh, events like that, but usually that happens when students would be the ones organizing. Well, it's probably because that the students aren't giving they're, they're, they aren't given a budget to give to student performers. So there's there's something wrong there. Uh, for me, though we ha- haven't had people directly demanding free work from us. Uh, I've noticed that the second comment after asking if we wanted to perform, that's always been, it's going to be good for exposure. I'm guessing it's because we're a relatively unknown high school band, so they kind of play the card of, you need us more than we need you. Yeah, so uh, li- like you said, in these trends, um, we're not just artists, we're also student artists. So most of the gigs that we go to are, um, <laughs> most of it is for stories in the artist's perspective. Because, young nga, there's not a lot of allocated funds towards like the budget of the artist because as students of the school it's seen more as an obligation rather than like a commission if that makes sense I, I think it's uh, important right now to just give the disclaimer that you're not here as Ateneo students obviously like we are asking you as artists as people um, we're just saying this in yes, case yeah. You know, your your school hunts you down. Like, yeah. uh, like at the day, if you're listening for some reason, it's not their fault. <laughs> this is just like experiences as an artist. Like, obviously, we understand that for student organizations, there is a reason why we can't ask for payment. 
Um, yeah. You don't want to breed that kind of culture very young, right? Especially yeah. since if if all orgs are just um, like striving to earn money, like people will just join the most lucrative ones, and you're not gonna learn what you need to. But like that's besides the point. Um, but yeah, I guess you're right that a lot of your stories, considering the real world, quote unquote, those would be horror stories. Yeah. yeah. So, or actually, what what is your stance as a group or as as individuals? Like, do you like exposure as payment? Do you believe all artists should demand payment at all times, or do you believe exposure is a good thing at certain instances or a necessary evil? Um, for us, I think uh, it is necessary to a point where uh, a musician or an artist is still learning their craft. So there is a part where you're still an amateur, so you have to hone that skill. So it's like your learning phase. But once you have the you, you once once you have enough skills, you have enough experience, and you have the gear for it, then I guess that's enough for you to get paid. So um, there, wait, uh, there are certain instances. So it, it really all just depends, um, because there are some like very special scenarios where exposure is actually better or most more preferable than any monetary gain, right? Um, but I guess the problem right now that like the the base the root problem is that. The clients that hire us artists really push a narrative that like we hungry artists, all we want is exposure because that's what we do it for anyway. Isn't isn't what they do? Uh, it, do don't they go into the arts just for attention? So let's give it that, and then there, it, that's a justifiable motive. So that's the root problem. Um, for me, I think exposure payment can be considered an outdated idea sometimes because. We have to consider the fact that promotion and marketing can be done way easier now through the online platforms. Uh, I understand that exposure is beneficial for artists in the sense that it helps them become comfortable with performing. And a few years ago, it definitely would have helped to gain fans. But now I feel like blowing up on social media does produce more fans than if people who are watching gigs like your live music. Um, it's also important to note for me that music, like any other art, is a product and performing is a service. Uh, due to this, it is expected that there is a transaction between musicians and events organizers. Uh, cash payment, of course, is a direct transaction, but when you think about exposure, you can't really confirm how much payment you get from that. Um, and another thing to note is that it's unfair that artists have to spend thousands on gear and spend on gas to get to venues only to be told that they're playing for free and that they're going to be cons- compensated with mm. something intangible. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah, so would you say that would you say that all your positions are different? Because I'm hearing like different things. Because Q was saying that, you know, it, it is actually okay, especially if you're an amateur. Um, Nino was like right down in the middle. He was saying that um, sometimes actually having exposure is more beneficial for the artist compared to um, cash payments and the only problematic part I guess is the expectation that this is um, what you're supposed to be paid in but for Nino um, I, I think your nuance was that exposure isn't really something that um, is super necessary like it's necessary for artists but in, in today's economy where you have uh, Facebook and Twitter <laughs> and all these different forms yeah. of social media, like you can, you can get exposure, like on your own. Why does it have to be something that's paid for you? Um, but considering that you're all coming from different points of view, what are some challenges that you guys face? Why do you guys think it's? Why do you guys think it's common actually, um, for exposure to just be offered or to be paid in exposure in the first place? Why do you think that? Like, regardless of whether or not you agree with it, why do you think that some people end up underselling the value of the products that they create? Well, for me, I think uh, some people undersell themselves because it's not taught to them in school. So they don't... uh, Artists aren't given as much importance as uh, other professionals because um, it's like, let's say, uh, you're being asked to play for a school event. You're not being compensated in a way that uh, your talents are appreciated as much as a 
let's say, an event organizer. So, uh, in that sense, it has to be taught in schools first. Because uh, we're asked to sell products. But what if the products we're selling is music? Do we get anything from that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it, it just ties back no, to the whole idea that liberal arts, as a, as a field in general, not just like music and arts, even like maybe even philosophy, like they, they don't get as much attention as they, they should. Um, and they're always seen as secondary because they don't see like tangible benefits to it. But I, I don't know why that came about, especially if you look at things now and we're in a pandemic. Everyone is just at home enjoying various creations of artists like shows and music. Yeah, yeah. Yet we're still not willing to pay for it. Everyone pirates everything. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I, I, I want to ask, uh, ask you uh, whether you think that more than schools, maybe should also, um, maybe the problem also starts in the household because um, remember the times when, like, I think it's a very common experience for parents to go like, ah, walang pera dyan. Um, don't go to this course because you won't get a job there. Um, why would you pursue this and this and this? Like, it's not lucrative in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it's kind of weird because at least from my experience, my parents were always telling me like, you know, I think you're good looking. Like, you know, parents say that. <laughs> maybe you should be an actor and then I say mm, actually sometimes I want to become an artist and at that point it's like no we said that as a joke if you're taking it seriously <laughs> no there's no money there so beyond schools do you think that like parents should also like take the responsibility to sort of dispel this notion that it's not a worthwhile endeavor to create or to become an artist I think for me it's um a lot of it is rooted in like when you look at um, academic-based um, professions, you can clearly see that oh, if you do this, you achieve this level. It's clear. F- it's clear for people to see that oh, you're gonna be you're gonna do well in this profession or something like that. But when you look at the arts, it's a lot of it is very luck, chance-based. Well, well, a few years ago, you could say. So I think a lot of parents or older people would still be um, in that mindset that there's a lot, there's a lot of risk in the arts, and uh, it won't end well for the children in that sense. So yeah. I think that what's important in that case is that it has to be shown that this is a viable option for people. This is something that they can be successful in. Yeah, so actually right now, we're in the discernment of choosing our college courses since we're seniors in high school. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so um, I've had, yeah, I have had a bunch of people tell me to choose a course that is not in the humanities or uh, something more uh, concrete in terms of earning because uh, yeah so I think society looks into artists as uh, how do you call this like uh, work that is very difficult to value so I think that should be taught early on but it isn't so yeah it, I agree it has to be taught in the household before it is not in the school. Nino and I are just making faces on each other the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> this is something like, our mother is probably listening to this, given that we're both here in the episode. Like, hi, mom. Um, hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, my mom was against me going to humanity. So I, I took Paul's side. And she only agreed to it because I was. she thought I was going to take law. Right? Because like the only viable way for me to be successful is to be a lawyer somehow. So I, I didn't do that. Um, I, I used to be very... I used to be artistic, I'd say. But I, I let all of that go because my mother needed, like, someone to earn money in the house. Uh, 
but that's still yes. not happening. So I bargained. I was like, maybe I'll just go into politics. And she's like, ah, oh, okay, my pera don, it's fine. <laughs> Nino, naman, she she wants Nino to be, um, she wants Nino to be a doctor. Until now, I think, right? But I don't know what what bargain you made with mom, you know. I don't. She wants me to be a doctor. I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's like her dream. Like, oh, my my daughter is a lawyer, and my son's a doctor. Son's a doctor. Oh my. PhD uh, na lang ni <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How do you oh, get man. your How do you get mom to support your music? You know, because I never oh, no. I was never around for that. I think I just I, I told mom that like I I genuinely enjoyed what I was doing. So that that that's one thing, no. Um. So like one factor is like all success and money. Another is really like a holistic development. That's one like that's probably that's probably like I mean as long as you can afford it, <laughs> which is something unfortunate. As long as you can afford it, holistic development should be like one of the only factors you look into. But the reason why money is like such a huge like play in in this is because well, unfortunately, we're not that rich. And, yeah, that's fair. Um, so, given that you said holistic development is important, and sometimes people just go into art because well, they're not always after the money. Sometimes it's a passion. So when when do you think you should draw the line? Like when is it acceptable to um, take exposure as payment, and when do you draw the line for oh. when it isn't acceptable, and when do you start demanding for pay? All right. Uh, so I'll go first. I guess. Um, so as I said, there are a lot of different factors to look into when discerning if exposure is a good payment in like a certain scenario. Um, personally in the band, what we look for, um, because most of the time we're offered like just a free gig, right? But so, and like the, the payment that they convince us or that they use to like convince us to go for this gig is exposure, of course. Um, but it really just depends on where we are or who we are being exposed to. So, for example, let's say we're in we're invited to a gig in a bar where it's very music centric, right? So that bar is known for gigs, talaga. They it's a specialty. It's a bar that's like that attracts music lovers. Being exposed as a band, being exposed to a crowd like that is super good for credentials, right? Because you're, you're like you'll probably get a lot of listens on like Spotify or SoundCloud or your, any of your socials after that because you're exposed to people who love music. Now, let's say we are invited on the next day. We're invited to a gig on another bar, pero yung bar na yun pang inom talaga. You feel me? Like it, the people, it doesn't attract music lovers anymore. It just attracts people who just go there to get drunk. The thing is, if we're gonna be performing in a gig th- like that, we won't be the main center of attraction. We'll just be background noise. So exposure in that environment is not so valuable. Therefore, monetary compensation is required. Otherwise, if kung kahit don walang any sort of compensation. We're just playing for people who don't care about us. So it just depends on the target market of the event that you're performing at. That's one factor. Well, uh, the target market is like, um, yeah, that is a factor, but I believe that there's a bigger factor to it. Because um, if you're if you're a gigging musician, so you go on go on you go on a lot of. Uh, events na there's an audience so you really need to get paid since you're spending money to practice you're spending money to get your gear you're spending money to go there uh you need to be able to eat um if if, if you're not compensated with those how would you live i mean like yeah we're students so we're supported by our parents so I guess as as since we're dependent on them, uh, as of now we don't need to earn as much yet. But once we're independent and 
we're the ones earning money for ourselves, then that's when that's when we need to draw the line, because we need to earn that money back that we spent on this stuff. Um, for me, I guess um, my answer would be a bit more specific in the sense that, for example, you can be invited to fundraising events that you're that are um, paid in exposure. Then, if it's something you really support or advocate for, then sure, go for it because that that's kind of a way to help the the fundraisers. Then, but another time when it could be okay then is. Um, for gigs that won't cost musicians much time or money, or gigs that don't conflict conflict with personal schedules in any way, like if you had a gig on this certain area, and then you could just walk or drive ten to fifteen minutes to another area, and it won't cost you much. And the that's pretty that's a pretty good time to be accepting exposure as payment. Mm-mm. Tapos, but hindi tinuturo yung financial literacy sa students at our age? Because like, okay, so you're taught accounting in ABM. Tapos, hindi tinuturo sa'yo na, oh, kailangan mong inotong expense mong pagkain, practice, studio, um, ano pa yeah, ba? Yeah, dude. Yeah, like, so like, ang dami mong oh gastos. You have so many things to spend for. But what you're getting back is very small. So parang yeah. hindi hindi lang na undersell. Like you're you're earning less. No, no, no. You're earning negative. So yeah. like but hindi but hindi na tuturo yung specifics ng uh, finance for artists. Yeah. Ano rin, like uh, about that like right? like The thing is, when people say that, like, oh, artists need to be paid, the the immediate like assumption is that oh, they're only gonna be paid for profit, for funds that will go to their other stuff, like I don't know, like a a new PC they want, a PS4. No, we use the profit we make to sustain us being artists. That's one reason why we need to be paid. We're not doing like. Come in, student artist. We need to be paid, but not because this is a line of work, but it's simply to compensate for everything that we've spent being an artist. Yeah, because all all the stuff we spend for those are investments. So we're yeah. investing on our we're investing on our skills, on our gear, on so many other stuff. And we're not being paid for it. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like we. Are in agreement that um, sometimes it's okay to have exposure payment when, like, the context allows for it, like um, charity events, fundraisers, or when, like, depending on the crowd that you'll be exposed to, it's actually worth more than like just being paid, but you're just background music or whatever. Um, but also, I think everyone is in agreement that. Like if you're really hungry, then you <laughs> deserve to get paid. Like, you know, th- those things that you know capitalists get mad at. Like, so in the, in this case, since we're talking about like um, financial liter- literacy, getting paid, being able to sustain yourselves, how do you then determine pricing, if ever, as an artist? Considering that, I feel like a lot of consumers, when they're thinking of um, whether or not to hire an artist, they always think. Why should I pay so much for this when I can I can easily find other substitutes like I can pirate something I have Spotify those kinds of things so if ever how do you determine pricing? Hmm. First, first, we na i you know determine mo yung because because there's no there's no specific sheet to it so everyone could uh could ask for how much they need or how much they want so. Let's say, uh, unahin mo, you have to list down your skill. If your skill is enough uh, to, if your skill is what these people are asking for, then you have to quantify that. So it's not just so you you have to make your qualities into a quantity. So yeah, skill mo una, and then your yung quality of work mo, and then the gear you have, and then uh, the the amount of time you spent for that. 
and then the transportation costs, and then the food, and then the amount of people that is going to be uh, working for that uh, event or for that album or something. So, there are some specifics, but it's not listed down for you. You have to be the one to list it down. So, in, in determining pricing, really the only subjective negotiable fee would be the skill level of the artist. Um, other than that, we have what's called the base price, and the base price covers all the, parang yung all the quantifiable things that's not based on subjectivity, like yung kagaya, the like gear, transportation. That's why we need financial literacy to teach our artists how to calculate for these costs, right? So we got that's where the base price is, and then the skill level is where. Jan na papasok yung negotiation between client and artist. 5k ba yung skill mo or oh, ano ka? I'm um, amateur. Can I check your portfolio or like, yeah, portfolio for a graphic artist and then oh, can I send me an audition of like so like what am I gonna work with you? So that's where the negotiation is. But uh, the artist needs to be the one to set their price that again, never the client. Excuse me. Um, so for the pricing, I think the most direct thing to take into account is that is the transportation and food costs for the whole day of that um of that gig, because um the most the the things that have to be that always have to be present are the events organizers need to be able to pay for the transportation going there and the and going home plus the food costs for the whole day because uh, as much as the artist skill is qualitative it, uh, the transportation food costs uh, will always be something quantitative and will always be yeah, yeah. seen so the easiest way to determine if Lugiga is if you've spent if you've spent so much more on the gasoline and the food than What you were receiving from that gig? Yeah, pero dapat hindi ka yung point ng point ng compensation. So dapat hindi ka maluge. Instead, dapat yung may profit ka. Eh. Kasi kung wala kang profit, how will you sustain your next gig? Di ba? Yeah. So like you'll you'll you're not you're not just gonna be broke. You'll be in debt. Kung kano? Yeah. Ano ano yung parang hand to mouth? Ano yat y- yung natin yung hand to mouth? Yeah. So, so I have a question, but this is for this is for Kyle actually, because like if if you don't know, yeah, like, Kyle's an econ major, and I, I'm really curious, like how come we're able to determine prices of like so many other things, but when it comes to like art and like um, things in that realm, like songs and artworks, ideas, like how come we have a harder time like determining like what the basic prices of those things are. Actually, it's interesting that you're mentioning that because as um, as Nino, Nina, and you were talking, I was actually doing like calculations. I was making like a formula for no like how to <laughs> estimate, like how will you price, um, how will you factor in the price of your gear, for example, in the base price, like Um But uh, your question to me was, how do we? Why is it that it's hard to estimate the value or the price of things like art? Uh, it's because art is generally what's called an experiential good, so it's only valuable in so far as there's a positive experience that uh, that the consumer gets. Uh, so that is very subjective. But you can help it be less objective with what Nina said, with like um, wh- with what you said, where you can quantify your qualities. Like y- you have. Like you turn it into an RPG or you gamify it when you say like I can estimate my level of skill to be worth this much, and then um, that's when you negotiate. Like what Nina said, that's when you negotiate with the buyer or the consumer. Um, and in actually, if you think about big corporations like big brands, uh, there's this something called goodwill, which is an intangible asset. It's basically branding. Um, so whenever you hear Donald Trump, for example, say I'm worth huge, huge amounts of money, and then it turns out he's not that rich, pala. It's because he 
owes a lot of his value to uh, intangible assets like branding or goodwill, which is why he's worth trillions or something, even though he's objectively not. So you can estimate something that's intangible or a quality like your skill or your branding and you estimate its value in terms of dollars um which is what they were talking about earlier when they were talking about um quantifying their qualities yeah so maybe that's the solution now we should just like everyone make character sheets of themselves like become a dnd character <laughs> like what's your what's your like efficiency level stuff like that because like I know we're joking about it, but it seems like given yeah, the yeah. financial literacy that everyone wanted in this like interview, that's really like the way to go. Like we, I think we're 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 sort of there already with other fields. Like a being a PhD holder means that you've leveled up like five times in the field of philosophy yeah. or something, right? Yeah. So I, I guess like if we know what now what, yeah, the stats. If we know now what we can do to sort of understand payment. Um, there's still an issue because of even if people know their worth, people are shy to ask for their worth. Like there's a there's a, a sense of hia when asking for payment for demanding it. So how can artists like yourselves, especially student artists, how can you normalize the idea of payment? Um, and especially if you're dealing with difficult people who don't see your value. For me, it's pretty simple, but it's an advice that even I'm so struggling to implement myself is that to learn to say no talaga kasi if you know na you're going to be giving up time money and money and the, you clearly can't see any positive impact this gig will have then it's pretty wise to say just say no because at the end of the day you you have a choice there you have a choice and you can't just sulk about how bad this certain gig went because he chose to take that gig anyways. So that that's that's important to me is that what's important to me is that you have to learn to say no. And another thing to to help in normalizing payment would be to build yourself up in a marketing advertising sense then. Because you, you, to be able to be viewed as established, you have to you have to be able to show that to people then. So, you, while, you, while you're obviously working hard for the gig side of it, you also have to work smart in a sense that how do I show these people? How do I show these people that I'm good enough? How do I show them that I'm established? And I think that can be done through a smarter marketing of oneself. Yeah, that was, that was for me. I think you can normalize it by having organizations like MIO. Like yung sa amin kasi, uh, we we nor- we want to create an environment of financial literacy, wherein students would understand their worth, and uh, they could develop their skills with whatever level they're at. So, um, if if many other schools like uh, if many other schools have organizations like these. Um, they will understand their value because they're surrounded by people who are having or are at their level na also want to uh, develop their skills as artists so that they could eventually have this as a living. So yeah, it, it all starts with, you know, having these groups. Like, um, if, if, actually, if it were possible, uh, our org could collab with other students in other high schools so that we can normalize Another project. you know yeah another but that that is a very big project to do yeah so yeah. if you're from another high school listening to this episode and you want to reach out you know feel free to hit us up man yeah, yeah. yeah hit them up <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um Actually, wait lang. So, the the way I understand this question is, this is normalizing the idea of payment from the artist side of it. Because prior, it's like, oh, the society, right? So, ito naman, how can the artist internalize the like, normalization of payment? And like, yeah. So, like, example, yung what Nina said, learn to say no uh, and build a, a market brand. 
And then Q is saying build an org, possibly, or like join an organization that will be surrounded by people who normalize the idea of payment. All of these like just trickle down to professionalism. Ganon lang. The, to normalize the idea of payment, you have to be professional. It's okay to be like very like flowy, like I'll let the wind like where it takes me. I'm a free spirit. But like, if you really want to normalize the idea of payment, you can't just be a free spirit. A free spirit, like <laughs> it costs a lot to be a free spirit, <laughs> so you need yes. to be paid for it. So you gotta normalize it eventually. Um, another, another, like really, really important thing to re- to uh rec- or to to take into consideration is yung, uh, like we said, the quality of your work. Is it worth being paid for, talaga? Because what if you're just an amateur? Like, just because you know how to play guitar doesn't mean you deserve to be paid for it, right? So it's the job of the artist, talaga, before even considering being paid. It's the job of the artist, talaga, to really hone in on their talent, be so good that they can no longer be afford to be shy, you know. So, so and, this is where I feel like I can I can kind of disagree with you. Because you're saying, yeah. right, you have to reach a particular threshold. But I think that clashes with what Kyle said, which is art is experiential. So, like, you might consider, like, someone a bad guitarist. But what if, like, to someone, they're, they're the most beautiful sounding guitar player in the world, right? I, I think that it, you can't balance how subjective art is um, mm-hmm. with, like, an objective set of standards. But then again, I, this is me rebutting myself, rebutting you. Um, mm-hmm. that's sort Possibly. of how the academe works, right? Like, as much as everything's yeah. subjective, you need to, if you're taking, like, music classes, there there are guidelines to pass. So I don't, I don't know how to balance that. So I guess for now, I, I begrudgingly agree with the professionalism <laughs> point. Like, begrudgingly. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, Nino and I went to music school. Mm, how'd that go? Mm. Yeah, um, yun eh. So, that's also another cost you have to take into account. So, yung lessons mo. But, yeah, that, no, so that's another factor. So, yeah, you're taking these lessons so that you can earn a better skill. But there's, there's an, there's a two point na the lessons aren't, uh, going to help you, but then they're just gonna add additional cost. So, are you saying that you deserve to be paid higher than Nino. You and Nino deserve to be no. paid higher. <laughs> uh, since, because we're, we're in the same org, and For the streets, uh, boy. Nino and I are in the same band, technically we're supposed to be paid the same. Because your experience as a band is different from your experience as an artist. Because you form your own branding. Okay, yeah. Fair, fair. Yeah. Like Adam Levine and, and everyone else. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, like, like I hope I, like I hope none of you don't have conflict. Like sadly, I'm not very updated with the drama <laughs> of your band. I'm assuming since you're both here, there is no drama. There's uh, no drama. Yeah, maybe there is drama, no drama with outside gigs, because I I do know Nino and you have been doing a bunch of gigs in in different bars. Like you you are probably well versed in yeah. bars more than I am, and I am like. Only one of us here is well versed. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've only we've only played in a bar once, actually. You know, oh. once, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. but, but we've watched, are... we've watched a lot. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's not go there. Yeah, um, but yeah, most of our gigs are just like school based. So yeah, but uh, the the bar thing that I the like the analogy that I came up with. That's yeah. That's it. It's, I just came up with. It. Uh, it's not geared on like any, or it's not like an experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have an idea, lang, because um earlier we were talking about like what were we talking about like normalizing payment, uh the idea of payment. So my idea was, I feel like there's a power asymmetry between like the artist and the the buyer, because to the artist. Baka nahihiya sila. Like, they, they might be shy in asking for money or, like, a good amount of money because they think that everyone else in the same position is willing to accept, like, a low payment or an even lower payment. 
Um, so like that, that also happens in the corporate world because a bunch of people are, are also really shy and asking for raises. And I noticed that it's because of a of a power or an information asymmetry, because the employer knows what is being paid to everyone. Meanwhile, the individual worker only knows how much he or she or they is getting. They are getting paid. So maybe a way to normalize the idea of payment is to remove. Or to minimize or reduce that information asymmetry, so that every artist knows that hey, that guy gets at least this much. Mm-hmm. Um, shouldn't all artists get at least that much? As gawa kayo ng artist minimum wage, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> A union, like an A artist union. union. Like a... Yeah, you could you could boycott some events if they don't give you. Because if you have everyone that you know is around the scene, then people would have to pay you, or else no one would go to your event. Yeah, so maybe it's like artists should also support other artists and like let, let's let's bridge this information asymmetry in uh yeah this information asymmetry. But like in the meantime, what can students and our listeners here and Nina and I specifically as well, what can we do to help? Ah, <laughs> uh, support your friends, support your artist friends. Um, yeah. go to their gigs. Uh, pay for their artwork. Uh, pay the pay for their album, their EPs. Yeah, yeah. Don't ask for discounts. Um, yeah, <laughs> do not. Oh my, yeah. Don't, don't ask for <laughs> like, oh, friend discount. Like, kailala mo naman ako. Uh, how will they earn at the end of the day? For now, siguro, because di ba most live events aren't allowed. But in I think what's important is to actively find yung local artists na na cool pahingan for you. Kasi, the, kasi ano eh, like, I think na if now you're trying to find those artists and then when we're allowed to watch live events again, I think that's gonna help attract more of an audience if there's a lot of people, if you share with other people and find small local artists that you're vibing with. I think it's yeah. gonna help in the long run when live events come back. So, you know, uh, um, like, through not only they have to like recognize that these local artists exist not only they have to listen to what they I mean, you you also got you also have to patronize the good ones like, you know so just treat your local artists just like any other artist in the scene just like any other like triple a artist out there because um most of the time like because Okay, so this is where it, like it gets a bit like paradoxical, but because the local artists know that th- what they're doing won't like give them a lot of money, the fact that they're still there, they're still doing it, you know that it's based on hard work and passion, right? So most of the time, um, like a lot of our local artists actually produce like really like top quality work right so not just music but also like g- graphic design and all that because they really put in the hours and like in their own accord you know they're not they're not like doing it for the money eventually they'll do it though but not yet so as long as they're still doing it for the hard work and the passion you just look for these artists and then listen to them and support them especially in an online setting maybe like use your I don't know social media accounts, use any of your platforms to run. Like, example, this interview, this is really helpful for us, not in, just making people aware that this is something that, like, needs to be talked about, that this is, that like, hey, we exist, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I guess that those are all our questions. Um, thank you so much for answering them. And, you know, before we go, like, speaking of supporting artists and what they do, if I remember correctly, from all the times Nino has played at the goddamn midnight hour, whatever song he's practicing, like, this is like, there's a particular tune that's just like stuck in my head. Uh, but, but I heard that you have used it and are going to launch an EP soon. So if you would like yes. to promote that and finally like 
end the suffering I've been having. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Thank you. Very <laughs> smooth transition. Uh, I love it. Uh, but yes, uh, you heard it here. Uh, we are having an EP launch, kami, uh, MIO, Music Industry Organization. So, it will be uh, on October 16. Uh, we'll have a Facebook live stream at, uh, at the same date. And it will be released on all major streaming platforms. Yeah. Ooh, yes. exciting! So Spotify. And and we'll be donating our profits to the PGH, the Philippine, yeah, General, Philippine Hospital. General Hospital, and the staff for yeah, to so if, uh, help the frontliners. Yeah. So if our listeners are listening to this episode on Spotify, like, go check that out. Yeah, we'll link it in the description. We'll link it also to the tweet. You know, like. You'll you'll know where to find it. Um, so I know that Nino and Q are in the same band. But what about Nino? Do you have anything you'd want to promote as well? Or <laughs> I mean, besides like the EP launch, because you're also MIO, right? For right as of now, I have a project called The After Party. It's an instrumental based um, project on SoundCloud. And I have one track released, so it would be very nice if you could listen to it. Yeah, yes. so I'll add that link in the description as well. So yeah, check so those out. Our bands are Doubtful Figure and OD. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so before we end this episode, we, again, last na talaga, super thank you, um, Nino, Nino, and Q for letting us ask these really difficult, but very important questions that somehow all lead to marketing and financial literacy and for also sharing your own experiences in, in our podcast thank you so much guys thank yeah. you guys thank you for having us yeah. this is yeah. really helpful to us yeah so I guess in conclusion being an artist isn't easy and hopefully whether you're a debater or not or you just stumbled on this episode or if you're a budding artist um, hopefully you learned something along the way Um, if you're an artist listening to this, you deserve more. Like basically, that's the conclusion we've been saying. But it always has to start with you, because you can't wait for society to like pay you properly. Like that's that's just like the sad truth of it all. And if you're someone who commissions art, please be generous and pay what you need to. Um, we would be nothing without artists th- these days, and we ought to remember that. The next time you're streaming Netflix, the next time you're in the shower listening to a Spotify playlist. Like, remember that. So that's it for this episode of Debatable. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. Thank you.